With Mardi Gras coming up around the corner, do you think it's about time we give them the jambalaya recipe? Let's do it. Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I'm Jessica. And I am Brian. Yes, uh, one of my favorite days of the year is coming up because it's, it's, well, it's Fat Tuesday. It's the day that my family would get together and eat some amazing Cajun food that uh, our, you know all the family members would make. I've got a ton of family down in the New Orleans area and uh, I love seeing them. I love eating with them. And that was just some of my favorite memories uh, spending time with my family on that particular day. So when we switched to a whole food plant-based diet, I was like, I don't think I can really eat a lot of Cajun food anymore. Then I found out that that's not true You're at very all. very wrong. It's so easy to, I, I didn't really know a lot of the recipes. I didn't grow up eating a lot of that, but um, I, you know, I don't really know. I'm like, what's the difference between like red beans and rice and jambalaya and all that stuff? Like I have no idea. And so he had to educate me a little bit, but actually it's so easy to get those flavors mm -hmm. without having any meat. You don't need any of that stuff. And um, when we first started working on this recipe, it's been a long time in the making that we've been making this and tweaking it back and forth. Um, but we didn't make a typical jambalaya. No, we did not. It was kind of more like a soup. I feel like we always like to have a really hearty, nice, giant portion of soup for lunch. And so when we first started making this, I think you just decided to thin it out a little bit and make it so we could have this massive, giant portion of it and feel like we were getting a lot of food. Yes. So this isn't a traditional jambalaya. This is a jambalaya soup. And uh, I think that it is absolutely fantastic. It is super healthy and it is perfect for that great, great day of Fat Tuesday that is coming up. So, should we get to cooking? For this recipe, you will need two green peppers, four stalks of celery, and one large yellow onion, AKA the Holy Trinity. These will need to be chopped up into uniform size pieces. We chopped them into about half inch size pieces. You will also need four cloves of garlic minced, and one cup of cooked brown rice, one 10 ounce frozen bag of riced cauliflower, one six ounce can of tomato paste, one 15 ounce can of diced tomatoes, no salt added, three 15 ounce cans of kidney beans drained and rinsed, and of course also no salt added, one quarter cup of mushroom powder. We have a video on how to make your own. You can find that linked in the description below one to two tablespoons of your favorite Cajun or Creole seasoning, one and a half to one tablespoon of your favorite hot sauce, one tablespoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of thyme, three to four bay leaves, and four cups of low sodium veggie broth. We of course like to use better than bouillon. And finally, you will need one tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce, liquid aminos, or tamari. All right, you will need a large pot or a Dutch oven. If you remember in the last video, we cleaned our Dutch oven and it's already getting dirty again, even after just a couple times being used, but eh, is what it is. So go ahead and heat this up to medium, medium high and add in your onion, your green pepper, and your celery. You may need to add some water if they start to stick to the bottom of the pot, but I find that this generally releases enough water to where it won't stick at all. Between five and 10 minutes of cooking, your vegetables will sweat down and the onions will turn translucent. Once you have that done, you can go ahead and add in the garlic. You just wanna cook that for about a minute to cook off the raw edge of the garlic and uh, you know, you'll know you know because it just starts to smell amazing with all of those vegetables in there and that garlic. Then go ahead and add in your cooked brown rice. If you add in raw, it'll take a lot longer to cook and nobody wants to eat crunchy rice. 
but just give that a good stir and then add in your riced cauliflower. This is of course cooked rice cauliflower. We steam it in these bags and uh, it's one of my favorite things actually. But if you have fresh riced cauliflower, it'll work too. It'll cook in the process. It just may take a little bit longer in the pot. Then go ahead and add in the entire six ounce can of tomato paste. And I like to mix that in and kind of cook it off just a little bit, but it's not really necessary. You can just add it all together with the can of diced tomatoes. Then add in the three cans of drained and rinsed kidney beans. Now, I love to add mushroom powder to things, but once again, mushroom powder just goes everywhere. So be careful with that. But just go ahead and add that in and give it a good stir. If you want to avoid the mess, you could add in a splash of hot water and kind of rehydrate it before adding it into the pot. All right, now for the seasoning. Andy Roux is my all-time favorite Cajun seasoning. They have a bunch of different products and you can find a link to those products in the description below. I am adding in two tablespoons of their jambalaya seasoning. You can add in more or less of your favorite kind depending on the spice level. You may have to play around with it. Start with a little and then add a bit more if you have to. After that, we are adding in a tablespoon of our favorite hot sauce, which is Cholula Original Hot Sauce. You can add in whatever kind you like if you wanna go for Tabasco or something like that. Any of those will work just fine. But once again, play with it a bit and find the heat level that you actually like. I like it with a good little kick to it, so I'm going with a full tablespoon. After that, add in the smoked paprika and the thyme. Then go ahead and add in the four cups of veggie broth. And just make sure that everything is stirred together and is just well combined. After that, we are going to add in one tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce and five bay leaves. I know I said four before, but we went with five because they were a little bit smaller here. Either way, it doesn't really matter because they're just going to add a lovely fragrance to all of this. And if you wanna add in more, you can add in more. It's not that big a deal. Cover and cook for 15 to 20 minutes, stirring occasionally. Uh, really, you're just trying to heat it all through. Uh, but I prefer to have my jambalaya soup to be a little bit soupier, so I went ahead and added in an additional cup and a half, a uh, cup and three quarter of water, just to kind of make it a little bit thinner. And I think that it comes out very, very nice. It'll thicken up once you actually let it sit and cool as well, but once you've got it all heated through, it is done and it is ready to serve. So there you have it. That was very extended. So I know. It's the world's tiniest jambalaya. Jessica has been so ecstatic about her tiny little Dutch oven here that <laughs> Peef was in in our cleaning video. Uh, it's a it is a half quart, two cup size, a uh, little. Uh, it's actually cast iron and everything. Like yeah, it's it's a, it's a legit, it's a tiny version of legit mine. Legit Dutch oven, like it's heavy and yeah. But I I just thought it'd be fun to eat out of this, so yes. I put it in here. So but in reality, it makes a lot. Like it makes a giant nice bowl of it. Good thing is you can freeze this stuff. Yes, it freezes and it very freezes well. Freezes very well and everything. But I think we should take a bite. Spoon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Peef size jambalaya soup. So you can see like it's it, it thickened up just a little bit. You can thin it out however much you like. You can add the full amount of water if you mm -hmm. want. Uh, I, uh, obviously I didn't, but 
This is just so good. When I was making test recipes for this mm. over this last week, I ate this for breakfast. I ate this for lunch. <laughs> I ate this for dinner. The first night that we made it, I ended up eating three bowls of this. I'm not joking. Like three bowls. And it's like, even this. though we've been making this for a long time now, because we keep mentioning it randomly and you guys keep going, where's the recipe? Where's the recipe? Had somebody send me the, a message last week asking for this recipe. And like he still keeps tweaking it and just like, yeah. But I feel like this is this is definitely a really good base version of the recipe. Yeah. And you want to talk about some of the other like additions and stuff you could do? So uh, I know you can put in just like chopped mushrooms if you want to add those. You can do that when you're cooking the other vegetables mm -hmm. off. Uh, that works out really, really well uh, if you didn't want to use mushroom powder. Uh, we, we experimented throwing in some tofu and stuff like that. Uh, we threw the tofu in originally just like we chopped it up and threw it in to see if it would like absorb the flavors. It was good but it wasn't like blow, yeah. blow your mind good. And I figured if you're going to use tofu you might as well toss it in some Cajun Creole seasoning and like pop it in the air fryer or the oven and kind of firm it up a bit more and, and then throw it into the soup. Yeah, and Brian's actually going to try that. So we'll put up some photos to show you how that worked out. Or oh, nice. yeah. maybe we won't put up photos of how it worked out because maybe we didn't do it. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I'm going to do it. I just don't know if I'm going to do it in time for this video to go out. That's the problem. Uh, but this is... This is one of my favorite little things to make, like right along with my red beans and rice, of which, you know, my red beans and rice is super quick and easy. Yeah. And like, that's kind of like a, I don't know what to eat kind of meal. This one, of course, is planned out. I get all of those lovely flavors that I like. It's a bit spicy. It's got a good little bit of chew to some of the vegetables, especially the celery, yeah. of which you guys know, I don't really like celery all that much, but I love this. And so it's just an all around great soup. Also, I've said this before and I will say this again. If you mix in a little bit of brown rice into a thing of cauliflower rice, it makes it taste like brown rice. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but it just works. Yeah. It's fantastic. And I suggest that you try it if you're trying to cut down on some of the carb intakes. Yeah. The other thing we were thinking about trying, and maybe next time we make it, we'll try this, is adding some soy curls in there. Yeah, that would be good. Um, yeah, so I I'm mean, thinking even add them in dry, like when you've got yeah, the liquid there, yeah, so yeah. they absorb all the liquid. Yeah. I mean, I think it. It don't. I don't think it really needs any of the add-ins. But if you want to play around and comment below and let us know if you guys, you know, find something that you really like that you think we should try out. We always like trying out new things, of course. And yeah. Brian always likes tweaking recipes after they've been released. So I'm sure he'll continue to do that with this one as well. Yes. Um, but I don't know. It's just a nice little, it's a nice switch up from having like a vegetable soup or a chili, which is what we tend to alternate between. This was always like a nice little third kind of option for us to do. And it's just super tasty. And the spice level, don't be afraid because I know like that was always a thing for me too is I always got like... The impression that a lot of the like Cajun Creole type things are very spicy, but you can really adjust the level of spice by just, you know, with the hot sauce and that spice uh, blend that the yeah. Cajun seasoning mix that you used, like you can totally cut back on that and, and really, you know, tailor it to your spice level. Uh, and always start out with a little bit and then add more because you yeah. can't take away, it's harder to take away the spice. <laughs> yes. Uh, so just, just keep tasting as you go along, try and figure out your level of spice that you like it. If you like it spicier than that, then go spicier. If you want it less than, then, you know, you can easily adjust and, and make it that way. But yeah, but... Is that, uh, is that pretty much it for yeah, this one? Yeah, that's pretty much it. You can always, you know, obviously check out the blog post for the full recipe. Um, we'll have a printable version and all the links to everything that you've seen in the video and all that kind of good stuff as well. So definitely check that out. Yep. And I just wanted to say uh, to any of my family members down there in New Orleans who are watching this, I love you guys. I miss you guys. Uh, I am so sorry that I was unable to make it down recently, but just know that you are all in my thoughts and prayers. And uh, to Marilyn, wherever you are, I love you and I will miss you greatly until I see you again. Uh, for the rest of this video though, please subscribe to the video uh, or to the channel and click the bell notification that is right next to it uh, and you will get notified whenever we post a new video. You can also find us on social media, Facebook and Instagram. 
And you can like and share the video if you want to get this out to other people. But uh, I think that's all I got. That's definitely all I got. We will see you next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Bye. Bye.